But uh, everything that's going on, you know, it's really, we shouldn't be surprised, you know. We sow what we reap. <laughs> you know, I mean, we reap what we sow. So uh, in some ways, you know, we have to be blamed because we are the church. And we're supposed to be the, the light bearers and the salt of this country. And we had not been doing a good job. And, and I'm talking about myself primarily. Amen. So um, it's not an indictment on anybody. It's just that we need to start really taking serious who we are. You know, we are the church of the living God. We are the body of Christ. And we are uh, a kingdom. Not only uh, uh, that, but we are God's children. Isn't that amazing? We, we are the people or well, the only reason why God has not destroyed any nation. You know that? Because God could just do like Sodom, you know, and Gomorrah and destroy them. You had enough. You know, if there was no righteous, he will do it instantly. Not because he's a mean God or because he, he wants, he likes, he delights in that. No, because when he, there's no righteous, there's nobody that can come, you know, before the Lord and pray for those people. And we are the church, and we have let our country go because of our own actions, and, and it's just, just take it as it is. Amen? And I'm, like I said, it's not an indictment. It's simply an observation. Uh, I want you to know that as you come together, you know, as we come together to worship the Lord here and to thank him for these eight years of our church, we want to welcome those who are in online right now, watching us through Facebook and WhatsApp and any other venue, you know. We just want to welcome you and, and ask you to just relax and let the Lord minister to you because he's here to bless you. Amen. In Lamentations 3, 25 and 26, oh, oh, I might, oh, okay. Um, we're going to start with 22. He says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. We're, verse 25, the Lord is good to those who whose hope is in him to the one who seeks him it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord amen what is the this scripture is telling us that uh, uh, that because of the compassion of God we are not consumed even though we had failed him in many ways but God loves us so much and he has great compassion in all those that are seek after the they go after his heart amen and he says his compassions never fail they are new every morning great is your faithfulness his compassions never fail it's really saying his blessings his grace never fails he's there every morning we every time we we come uh, we wake up we it's because of the compassions of god it's because of the compassions of our Lord that we are able to operate and live and have our, our and live. So every day, every morning, we know that, that that is because of the great compassion of God and because of His faithfulness that we can count on being on that day. But we don't take uh, that day for granted and never really acknowledge that it's because of His great compassion. And his, uh, uh, his faithfulness that we are not consumed. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and he says, uh, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. You see, we, sometimes we come to church as a duty, not as somebody that is coming to meet a king, a lord, a God in our midst. You know, we come as, as, as sometimes with the motion of church and not with with the love for God to be the church 
that he wants us to be. Amen? And God is looking for people with expectation. Where is your expectation? If you can come to church every time that you come to church, and if you leave the same way you came in, you weren't in church. Amen? You were not in church because church is here, and the Lord is here to supply all your needs, to give you everything that your heart desires according to his word. Amen? But sometimes we come to church, like I said, like, like something that we have to do instead of looking forward to be in the presence of God Almighty, to be ministered by him. You see, we think that we come to minister to him, but he's here to minister to us, really. That's why he's here, you know, to minister to us. And sometimes the Lord leaves a meeting in church because nobody is there to demand from him what you need from him. Because sometimes you think you don't deserve it. Or because sometimes you think you, you, you didn't have enough, you know, uh, points, you know, starts in your, in your life, you know, to kind of get what you need from the Lord. And sometimes we live with the same infirmities, the same hearts, the same rejections, the same uh, uh, needs. We live the same way, church, and that should not be. I want you to, from now on, because I really believe that the Lord is saying, this is the time to grab everything that he has for you and really be violent about getting it. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and what the, the word says? Those that take it by force. We need to take it by force. Do not be complacent. Do not, you know, that's probably why our country is in the position it is now, because we had to say, is their country not our country? It's not God's country, it's their country. And that's not true. That This country belongs to the Lord. Amen? And he loves America. He loves all the people of America. He loves black, white, yellow, whatever color. He loves America. America has a great purpose in this earth. And if we don't fulfill that purpose, you know who's going to miss also? The rest of the world. I'm telling you that. No nation has lasted more than 200 years, including Rome, uh, Babylon, or Greece, or any other, you know, great nation. When a nation is giving so much, is recorded. The Lord is going to require much. And let me tell you, right now, the Lord is requiring that we rise up and that we take our position because it's over. We have been complacent. We, uh, we have been in, in, in a slumber, you know. We have been in, in a place where no, we have not been uh, uh, effective. We have not been the church of the living God. So we need to rise up and we need to, uh, you know, start really drawing from the Lord. Everywhere that the Lord Jesus Christ went, you know, people draw from him, draw the anointing, draw the peace that they needed. They draw, uh, you know, healing, uh, needs that they needed. Whatever they needed, they draw it from the Lord. And sometimes we come to church and we don't draw anything from the Lord. It's like the Lord is, is saying, I have the supply but I don't have the demand because you don't demand from me. And the Lord is saying now, it's time for you to be demanding of that which I had given to you already. So the Lord is, he wants, he wants you in this conference to not live with your problems, do not live with your hurts, do not live with anything that is keeping you from receiving everything that God has for you. Amen? Every day, he says, he renews his compassions, his grace to us. Every day. Hallelujah. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It's really depending on his faithfulness, not my faithfulness. Because <clears throat> sometimes I cannot be, I am not faithful, but yet he remains faithful to us. Amen. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord because he wants to release himself in your needs, in everything that you uh, desire from him. The Lord is good to those who, whose hope 
is in him. Amen? Amen. And I like uh, Isaiah 30, 18. I'm going to finish with that. This is just one, 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 two. What I want to is to whet your appetite for the things of God. Because, you know, we, we sometimes, you know, we, we call places, you know, we're going to a revival. And we end up not being revived. That's not God's plan. If we call it our revival, let's revive. Amen? Amen? Isaiah 30, 18, the word of God says, Hallelujah. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blesses, blessed are all who wait for him. Hallelujah. So wait on the Lord. Draw from the Lord. You know, demand from the Lord. You know, the word demand is not a bad word. You know, sometimes we say, I cannot demand of the Lord. He's God. You can demand because it tells you to demand. Amen. The people that came to Jesus to be healed, to be delivered, to be raised from the dead, they demanded of the Lord that which they needed. Amen. So praise God. I, I, I'm not going to take much of the time, but uh, let us just worship the Lord and let us just exalt his name and draw. Draw. You see, the wells are full to the rim. Get your bucket and get what the Lord has for you today. Amen. Praise God. Let us uh, raise up as we pray. And then the praise and worship will, will start right here. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves to you, Father. We humble ourselves before your mighty hand that in due time you may exalt us. But right now, Lord, it's about exalting you. It's about magnifying you. It's about drawing near to you as you draw near to us. It's about resisting the devil and he will flee from us, Father God. It's about your word, Lord. It's about your, your passion. It's about your delight, Lord. It's about you, Lord God. We commit ourselves to seek your heart, to seek your will, to seek your passion, to seek your plan, to seek your purpose for our lives, for our families, for our country, for our state, for our city, even in the name of Jesus, for the world, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone that is here and those that are in their way, Father. I believe that you're going to minister, especially in this conference, Lord God. That you're going to minister to them, Lord. That you're going to meet them, Lord God, at the time of their need. You're going to meet every need of them, Father God. Because you are a giver. You are a God of goodness and mercy and kindness. You are the God of compassion. And we thank you, Lord God, for being among us. Move and have your way, Lord God. Have your way among your people. Have your way, Father God, and minister to your children, Lord God, that we may be the kind of church you deserve, Father God, the kind of church that will glorify your name, the kind of church that will exalt your name and lift up your name in every place, in every corner, in every street, in our workplace, in our uh, everywhere that we may be, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We give you the praise, the glory. Holy Spirit, have your way. Move. We release angels. We release release your angels, harvesting angels, warring angels, healing angels. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, King of angels, have your way. In the name of Jesus, we declare it, we decree it, and we call it so. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome. Thou art welcome. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome. Thou art welcome. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thou art
are worthy, Jehovah. Just worship him. Go before him. Go before the Lord. Proclaim of his goodness. Just tell him how wonderful he is. We worship you, my God. You are able, Jehovah. We give you all the praise. There is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. We worship is you, King of glory. We worship you, my God. You are worthy, Jesus. You are awesome, O King of glory. There is none like you, my God. There is none like you. You are great. You're mighty, my God. You're excellent in everything that you do, King of glory. You alone are worthy, Jehovah. Excellence is your name, Jehovah. I don't deny there's none like you. We exalt you. We honor you, my God. King of glory, we worship you. Jehovah, we call you mighty warrior, my God. We call you mighty warrior, God. For you are the wins. You are the one who wins the battles, oh God. We worship you, King of glory. We adore you, oh God. You're glorious. You're mighty, my God. You're awesome, O oh King of glory. You're awesome, O oh Jehovah God. We worship you, King of glory. I 
prints are through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter, I enter the holy of holy. I enter, I enter through the blood of the Lamb. My God, I enter, I enter to worship you only.
name is holy. The name above all other names. Hey. Him. Lift up your hands and worship Him. Lift up your hands and worship Him. Worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. Hey, worship Him, worship Him. Let us worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. We glorify your name, Jesus. For your name is holy. There is none like you, Jesus. I don't know what you're experiencing, but I'm experiencing the glory of God already. The power of God is mighty in this place. Just purpose in your heart not to miss the visitation. The visitation of heaven. The Lord is moving right now. Every yoke in your life is being broken. Even those who are watching online. I want you to lift up your hand wherever you are because yokes are breaking of you. In the name of Jesus, I declare yokes breaking in your life. I declare if you are sick, you are healed right now. I declare if you are, you are pressed, I declare freedom in your life right now. Hey, sapoka sakaha. Shelalalabaha sokopohos kenia. Yes, freedom has come your way. Freedom, 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 freedom. 
Hallelujah. Freedom, freedom. I declare freedom. Yes. You have overcome. You have overcome. Every stronghold shall be broken. Clap for Jesus. Shout for Jesus. Hey, you have overcome the world. Yes, 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 yes. The Lord is in this place. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you. And we want to praise your name because of who you are. We also thank you because of honoring us with your holy presence. Father, we don't take it for granted that you have ascended in this place over this conference. Lord, to set us free and to bless us and just to shape us into your image and likeness. And Father, this being the beginning of the conference, we commit the three days before you that your glory will ascend, will descend in this place that your holy angels will ascend and descend in this place and that many will be set free in the name of Jesus and that your word will be spoken with a lot of accuracy Lord to set your people free and Lord to touch them and change them to their destiny Father we thank you for everyone that has come tonight and those who are going to attend in these three days we pray that your glory will be manifest in this place more than ever before. Father, we thank you because the enemy is defeated. And thank you because victory is our portion. Victory is our side. And therefore, we praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we all say, oh, Amen.
God bless you. God bless you. Are you blessed? Yes. Even if you were to go home, you're already blessed. Are you blessed already? Yes. Amen. This is just but a beginning of great things that are going to happen in this place. May the Lord bless you, praise and worship. You did a wonderful, wonderful job. May God bless you. May God continue to anoint you and to use you greatly. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I really enjoy that moment of worship. The Lord touched me. Amen. How many are touched already? Amen. I am touched. I am touched. I am touched. And so I want to thank God for every one of you. Today is our beginning of the conference. For those who are not aware, we have started our conference, Times of Refreshing uh, Conference. And I know we, we may be seated. May God bless you. And uh, we're going to have three days of encounter with the Holy Spirit. How many expecting an encounter with God? How many? How many? Let me see. How many? Yes, yes. Say I'm expecting. I will never be the same. Amen. Amen. So I bless God. I want to also say to those who are watching on the internet, uh, we are so delighted that you've been able to log in to be with us in this conference. Uh, we're going to be here for three days, and uh, the Lord is going to be here in a mighty way. And so we are delighted that you've been able to make it, to come to be with us. It's going to be awesome. Amen. And so may God bless you. We, may God bless you. I also thank God for every one of you that has been able to come. Uh, for those who have not been with us, uh, Brother Evans, God bless you. We are so glad that you made it. Amen. Let's clap for him. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Evans you and your family. Also, I want to thank God for my pastor friends of mine, uh, Pastor Henry and your wife and your daughter for coming. Let's clap for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is always an honor whenever we, you, you, you come to visit us. Uh, we, like, we love the fellowship. Amen. And so I want us to, uh, before we go to the word this, this night, uh, we also are uh, visited by uh, uh, friends of ours from California. Uh, prophets uh, of God. Amen. So a prophet is in the house. <laughs> Amen. Apart from Fred, Fred is also a prophet, but we also have another prophet, a visiting prophet with his wife, all the way to, from California to be with us in this conference. I want them to come here. I know they have their mic. Can you come here and, and say hello to the people of God? Just come over here. Uh, I, want, I want just you to stand here. Just come over here. Amen. You can move your, 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 <laughs> I know you are so used to these masks, but uh, they are coming down. Amen. How many know they are coming down? They are coming down quicker. So we want to thank God for Eric, Pastor, Prophet Eric and your wife. We are so glad that you made it to be with us. They were on mission in, uh, in, uh, in Juarez, no, in Mexico, but uh, Baja. And they decided because we have a conference, they wanted to participate. They're going to be ministering here tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, they're going to be here ministering. And also, they're going to be with us on Sunday and on Monday. So, we wanted to say hello to the people of God uh, and, and just uh, tell them how delighted you are. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so blessed, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for, uh, for this refreshment. Thank you to the body of God. Thank you so much. Um, I really, um, I mean, you don't need much. As soon as you start praising the Lord, you get connected immediately Amen. with his presence. So if anybody are over there, come. Don't miss this conference. It's such powerful. And the praise and worship, oh, my God. I can stop crying. I really need this refreshment. I know and I'm never going to be the same again. Amen. 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 God bless you. Um, I have the tendency of agreeing with her. First of all, I, I give honor to God first and to Pastor and to uh, Pastor Margaret. It's, so, it's just a blessing to be here and to the, the body in the house. It, it's so good to see familiar faces here. Uh, we look forward to fellowshipping with you, and um, <clears throat> the anointing is going to be very strong. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of prophetic words that God is going to release, and so I'm telling you, get ready. Uh, God's got a miracle with your name on Amen. it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. We are so glad. 
I know we spoke with him and he said uh, he has something for us. Amen. And so don't miss these three days. Don't miss these three days. The Lord has a word with your name on it. Uh, say amen if you believe that. Amen. The Lord has a word with a name on it and uh, God is going to minister to you. The presence of God already is so thick right now. When I was there and I was, the, the praise and worship were, were, were going on, the power of God was falling. Amen. And I believe every one of you were receiving a touch. I could see Fred trying to hold the wall. Whenever I see him holding the wall, I know something is happening. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So Fred is so sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we thank God because you've, you've been able to come. I just want to lay a foundation of what uh, uh, the message that God put in my heart uh, this first day of the conference and tomorrow we're going to be having uh, Prophet uh, Eric uh, ministering with his wife. So come expecting. Amen. And also on Sunday, I know we're going to have a great time ministering together with them. Amen. We're going to have an awesome time. Sunday, don't miss. For those who are watching and you are around El Paso, I would urge you to come. Sunday will be the climax. And you don't want to miss the climax even. Because we're going to have an anointing service. Breaking yokes. Breaking barriers. Your life will never be the same. So there's a momentum that is going to begin from now until Sunday. I'm telling you by Sunday, your life will never be the same. Say amen. amen. Your family will never be the same. Say amen. amen. Your ministry will never be the same. Amen. Your business will never be the same. Jose, say amen. <laughs> amen. Those who are businesses, our sister Kathy, we have business people here. And also, uh, Evans is also a business person. God is going to change your life. Praise the Lord. Say a big amen for that. Every one of us, I'm believing God for every one of us, even those who are watching, that your life is taking an about turn. Say amen. amen. And so I want you to open your heart as much as you can. As much as you can. I want when you, when you leave this place, going back to your hotel room or your apartment or your house, spend one hour, at least one hour, preparing yourself because I believe we are on the verge of a great revival. Verge of a great revival. It is happening. I know. I can feel it in my heart. And, uh, and I know this is, and that's why I want to share with you this, this night for a few minutes because today is just a beginning. Uh, I want to share with you understanding times and seasons. Understanding times and seasons. Spiritual seasons. That is very, very important. If there is anything you don't want to miss in your life, it is God's seasons or seasons and times. You see, God works with the seasons and God works with the times. That's what the Bible says in the appointed time. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 that there is time. If you can go, go to that scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I also want to encourage you, for those who are watching, if you don't mind, share it. Share this uh, meeting with other people, those who are watching online, those who are here, if you can share it. It is not compulsory. <laughs> Amen. But it's good for people to, to, to benefit from this conference. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. No, it's chapter 3, sorry. Chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. In everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I want first of all to give you a definition. What is a season? You know, season. What is a season? A season is a period which comprises time to do something or not to do something. It is more than that. A season is also a period where a purpose is fulfilled. A purpose is fulfilled. It is, so when we say time, 
within a period, uh, time is a period which comprises whenever you see fruits, they come with a season. And I know all of us, we are lovers of fruits. Though nowadays we have technology whereby you can have greenhouses where you have fruits throughout the year. But the way God designed things is to operate with the seasons. That is why right now in a season, summer season, we're going to be going into, into uh, is it fall? We're going to go into fall and then we're going to go into winter. And uh, Fred was educating me on seasons here, and he was telling me they are in three months. They are normally in three months. Summer is supposed to be, in, though it's, it is not accurate, it's supposed to be three months of summer, three, three months of, of fall, three months of winter, three months of uh, spring. They are supposed to be that way, but now th seasons have been altered. The other day we had a winter, a short winter, <laughs> for one day. And so seasons are very, very crucial in life. There are things that happen in your life and you don't know there is a season. God has opened a window for a season in your life. And the thing you don't want to miss is when your season is up. You would rather miss a bus but not a season. You would rather miss somebody's appointment but not miss the season. Amen. Don't miss a season. And so we're going to be sharing about seasons. And I'm just laying the foundation. This is a, a large topic, but I don't want you to miss because some of us, I know, uh, and when I look at back, back in my life, I see some moments where I was in a season, but I didn't know. There was a window that was open in my life, and I didn't, I didn't know. So today I'm going to share with you, how do you tell that you are now, your season is up? Because there are seasons for everything. The Bible says there is, where we read in the, in the book of Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. I like what the Bible says, purpose. It's because it's not talking, uh, there is a season for you. It is saying purpose. You, uh, you, you, you have been here for purpose. So in other words, the reason why you were born in this century in the time we are now, it is not just to be able to, 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 to grow up, you know, to be a part of your family, to have a, a wife, a children, children, you know, to have a job, you know, uh, have a good income, you know, have a good house. No, 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 no. You are here for a purpose. Every one of you, you are here for a purpose. And your purpose was for this time. That is why you did not manifest in the time of Moses. Though some of us would wish, I wish I was there in the time of Jesus. That's what we say most of the time. We say, you know, I wish I was there when Jesus was moving, you know, walking on the water. I would have walked also maybe on the water or maybe I would have seen the miracles. But do you know you are living in the best time now where the Holy Spirit, where Jesus is with you 24-7. When, when you sleep, he's with you. When you are walking with him, he's with you. When you, are, when, you, when you are discouraged, he's also with you. When in your good times and your bad times, he's, he's with you. So you are living in the best season, in the best time of your life. And so there is a reason why. Why did you not manifest in the time of Jesus? Because there was no purpose there for you. You manifested now because your purpose was in this time, generation. The problem is most people will appear before God and they will have failed their purpose. The reason even why God supports you and he gives you a good job is to fulfill your purpose. The moment you fail to understand that, your job becomes immaterial. Whatever resource that has come into your life, it is not just for you to make to be happy, you know, to, to enjoy, to have a good meal on the table. No, no, no. Th that is just by the way. The main job is the purpose. That's what the Bible says. Now because you know you are here for a purpose. Because the Bible says in the book of Colossians 1 verse 16. Colossians 1 16. If you can go to Colossians 1 16. 
because this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this period we are believing God for, for revival. So this is part of the preparation because we're in a season. Uh, and so Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, the Bible says this, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or powers, all things were created for him. By him and for who? For him. So everything you have was created for who? Answer me back. Some of you don't want to say it. Everything was created for who? Your car was created for who? Your family was created for who? Your business was created for who? That's what the Bible says. When you know everything you have in your life was created for him, you have to be careful. You'll be careful. When you're driving your car, you're going to be careful. Why? Because this car was created for him. It was for his glory. So the reason why we are careless with life and things of life is because we think things are for us. Yes, they are for you, but you are just a steward. Whatever you have, you are a steward. It was for him. So even if you have money in the account, you need to have this in mind. This money was created for him. But then in the process, you get to enjoy it. But there is an assignment tied to everything that you have. Praise God. You see, when I was thinking about this, I could look even at, you know, when you walk around, you see vehicles, you see those vehicles were created for God. The problem is most people are using them for other things. And when I say vehicles were created for God, it doesn't mean they should be packed here outside the church. They can be in a company, but for the glory of God. And so I want us to see, because Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32. Matthew 24, verse 32. Jesus speaks of how to tell when a season comes. How to tell when a season comes. Because there are many seasons. Because as you read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the Bible says there are seasons to, to, to plant. There are seasons to harvest. The problem with us is that sometimes when we are, we are supposed to, it's a season to, to plant, we are not aware. We are thinking it's a season to harvest. And we miss out. So Matthew chapter 24 and verses 32. Matthew 24 and verses 32. The Bible says, Now learn a parable of a fig tree. When, the, when, when his branch is tender and put it for the leaves, you know that summer is near. So Jesus is talking about signs. Uh, signs. He's saying, when you see the leaves falling, they are tender and they are falling from the tree. You know what? Summer is near. It's a, sign, it's a season. Jesus was, trying, telling, was, was using a physical example to explain about, a spiritu, about spiritual seasons. That the same way you see trees shedding leaves, that is how seasons also come. So there are signs when it comes to seasons. And I'm going to show you several signs how you can tell that your season has come. There are different types of seasons. And that is why we, I said, if you read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, if you can go back there, there are several seasons. There are many seasons. And the problem is, sometimes when you, when, when you, are, you are operating outside the season, you fail. You fail. Why? Because it's not season. There is season for every purpose. The Bible says, to everything there is a season, verse chapter 3, and every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born. So there is a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck, a time, a time to pluck up that which is planted. That it means to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. Did you know even we, weeping has a timing? 
Some of you, some, sometimes God wants you to weep. Not to weep because you jumped your hand on the door. Or because somebody harassed you at work. Some of us, we cry because somebody harassed you. No, that's not, it's not, it's, it's taking, t- there's a time God puts tears to, for you to cry for somebody. Spiritually, these tears, God can use them. There are times I've gone before God and I feel I need to cry. I don't know why even when I'm crying, but I cry. And that is a season. The problem is sometimes when we are, we are supposed to cry, you bind that season. You say, why am I crying? Especially if you're a brother, you say, I'm a, I'm a, br- you're a, mama, I'm a man. Why should I cry? So you, you hinder that season of crying. Because there's a purpose why you are crying. A time to laugh. There is also a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. That's why I tell our praise and worship team, whenever you are leading people into, into dancing or telling people to dance, just make sure it is time to dance. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever felt you want to dance even when nobody is dancing? Dance. Dance. The problem is that you look around and you wonder, what is my wife thinking? Uh, he might think I've gone nuts. He might call 911. <laughs> Please go ahead and dance. Because that's the time. The problem sometimes, when it comes to seasons and times, they are custom made. My time for, for doing something might not be your time. Am I right? My time of sowing might not be your time. So don't tell people to sow when, when you are the only one being told to sow. Don't tell me to fast. And you are the one who has been told to fast. We are so quick at looking for people to fast with us. You want reinforcement, every one of us. Please be careful. Don't go give reinforcement. I have done that before where somebody comes and says, Pastor, support me. And I tell you, I have a hard time. She is having an easy time. Why? Because it is her season to fast. But for me, it is my season to eat. (laughs) To feast. Do you know there is even a time where you are supposed to sleep? The problem is we, we sleep all the time. You sleep even beyond. There is time. There is a time I've, I've, I've tried to sleep and I've struggled with the sleep. Not because there's a demon attacking me, but there's a time for me to wake up and pray. Please, if you lose your sleep, especially in the night, ask yourself, is this my time to wake up? The problem you say, no, it's not, it's not eight. It is three in the morning. <laughs> then you miss God. It was a season. It was a window that was opened for you to communicate with heaven. And you thought there was an interference with the dev- from the devil. Amen. So I want to explain to you, your season is not my season. It may not be my season. Don't force people to do what you are doing. Don't force people to laugh and they are supposed to be crying. You are the one who is supposed to be laughing. And so seasons are very custom. They are, they are, they are styled towards you, towards your purpose. Towards your purpose. That's why I told you that when it comes, I was teaching about sins of omission, commission and omission. God can tell you to do something when he's not telling somebody else to do the same thing. He told John the Baptist, go and live in the wilderness. Not everybody was told to live there. And he was told even the menu to eat locusts and honey. That was his dad. Not the prophet. Prophet says, no, he is not called in the wilderness. (laughs) And you see, whenever you live within your season, you have some grace. That is one thing I I want you to understand. You get some grace. Some of you, let me ask you. In fact, when we go to heaven, I'm going to ask him, how are you you able to get honey from these bees? You will discover with him he had no problem with the bees. Maybe he will tell them, "Can can you move a little bit? They may, it's my lunch time. But you try, you try and go in a, in a beehive. You have to arm yourself. But for him, it was easy. 
you walk with John the Baptist, he says, you know what, it's time for lunch. He starts running. How much grasshopper can you feed a prophet? How many grasshoppers? Not two. That means this man was physically fit. He used to run from one bush to another, getting them. And I don't know how he used to fry them. <laughs> or maybe he used to call them, come, come. Because he had grace. He had a special grace. You see, one, number one, if you can write this down, when your season is up, you have special grace. You find it is easy. For example, if God calls you, we're going to see. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, and the Spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted, and he fasted there for how many days? 40 days. You go try fast 40 days. Why? Because that was his season. When your season is up, number one, you're going to have a grace to perform, to, to endure whatever season you are having. And the season that Jesus was going through was a training season. I would call it a, a, an equipping season and a training season in the wilderness. That's where he was tempted. T temptation is part of, 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 of training or testing. There's a time when God wants to take you to a season of training. You know, when I was thinking about season and times, it's just like the way we normally go to school. You don't go to school all the time, right? There's a season where you went to school. Okay? The right season. And so what happens, even in spiritual life, there's a time where God takes you to school. It can be in many forms, whereby you find he can use people to train you, to talk to you. I remember there's a time somebody, I, I used to think somebody, this individual and many individuals, there's a time in our ministry, we got a lot of books. Even now we have a lot of books. I, I didn't know until I came to see, oh my God, this was a window. These books were meant first for me. When you see people giving books to you so much, it is a season to learn. Or you find a window has opened for you to go to school. It never used to open, but now a window physically, a physical school or a spiritual school, it is a season to, to learn. Or the Lord exposes you to a teaching ministry. You find you are flowing with a teacher. Or somebody is assigned to your life to teach you some stuff. Somebody says, you know what, I want to train you for this. Please, no, it's a season to learn. There's another way you go into learning which is not very pleasant and is the wilderness. The Bible says the Lord took the children of Israel for training, to humble them. It was a training process. It's not the best. That means God, God can allow wilderness situation to get stuff out of you. Do you know why people go through wilderness? It's a class. Because in the wilderness, you have nothing to hold on. What, what do you hold on? It's only him. So God removes everything around you so that you can communicate with him. So that he can train you how to trust in him. Amen. You know, when I talk with our military people who are here, they keep on telling me all the time, you know, we are going one week training. Some of the places they go, they go for training, actually most of the places they go for training, they are not pleasant. They tell me they go to a, a California, a very hot place. Why are they exposed to those places is, is for training, to be hardened. So there are times when you find you go through a wilderness and it's a season of training. Please endure the wilderness. Tell your neighbor, endure the wilderness. You know, in the wilderness, it is, you don't get things flowing the way you like. There, there, there are no McDonald's. There are no Chick-fil-A's. You know, the only McDonald's you find is cactus. And some shrubs and uh, some water that is not distilled. You is not filtered. Have you ever have you ever gone through such a, such a wilderness? You know, in, in, a, in our born modern days, a wilderness is whereby you find you don't have what you need. You struggle to eat. It's like you are living from 
from, uh, you are struggling in many things, even clothes. There's a period I went through the wilderness, I couldn't buy new clothes. I couldn't afford even a new shoe. So if you find a brother saying, you know what, this jacket, I was left my, by my, grand, my grandfather, and, and it's, it's as new. That brother, don't just say, praise the Lord, he's in the wilderness. The grace, you know when you're in the wilderness, you have special grace. Your, your clothes don't wear out. Even your shoe grows with you. <laughs> the Bible says the children of Israel, their clothes grew with them. I mean, I want that grace. No, I don't want it. <laughs> if you want it, I want to change suits. I mean, I want it. No one. They, their shoes grew. Imagine, if you had a skirt, if a sister, it grew with you. A dress would grow with you. Why? Because it's a wilderness. So if you want to know you're in the wilderness, you have grace even in your clothes. They don't wear out. You tell people, this shoe you are seeing here is 1970. That's not a testimony. They are, they are telling you, I'm in training. You are dealing with a trainee. <laughs> I'm in a trainee in the house here. Don't lift your hand. So I want to tell you that so that you can tell I'm now in training. Wilderness is a place of training. So there are many things. So I want you to be sensitive. There are times when God wants to train you. I used to tell people, uh, and I know some of them are watching in Kenya. The church we used to have in Kenya, I didn't know. I was speaking prophetically, but I didn't know. I told them, you people, take notes. Write. You don't know where I will be sent. You don't know where you will be sent. There's a time God can expose you to a ministry to learn, and you are careless. You don't, you're not serious with messages. And those messages will take you far. So there's, a, there's what we call preparational season, where God prepares you for ministry. He prepares you for even for marriage, for a blessing. You see, the problem we have, sometimes we, we, we want the blessing, but we don't want to preparation. I like what somebody said. If you, are, if you want a husband, it's very easy for you to be taken to training where God exposes you to a boss who is a, a lady. So that he t that lady will, will kind of shape you up to, to be able to accept, to be able to a a attract a wife in your life. Praise God. That's why you find whenever you see in the Bible People like Moses, who are supposed to lead human beings, God exposed them to be shepherds. They looked after the sheep. There is a connection, if, if, whether you know it or not. That's why the Bible says we are the sheep, right? He's a shepherd. So physically, we have a similarity with the sheep, with the physical sheep. Not goats, though some people are goats, but we don't have any goat in the house. <laughs> we only have sheep. Maybe another day we're going to have a teaching on the difference between a goat and a, and a sheep. And so, you see many people like David and Moses, they went and took care of sheep. Why? It was a training because of what they're going to become. Some of the professions that people go through, God is, wants to see how you are relating. Even for you who are in nursing, when you are, you are handling patients, God is watching you. If I expose this lady or this brother to become, to take care of my people, spiritual pa uh, patients, how are they going to handle them? So when, when, when the Lord sees you are mishandling a patient, you are not even paying attention, they are bothering you, now he knows this one, uh, I, I don't have somebody here. Uh, she, she, she can continue with what is here, but in my house, I need somebody who has a heart for people. You will find God wants to train you for patience. Amen. And so there is a season of preparation. I want us to see something here. Elijah also went through the same. 1 Kings chapter 17, 2 to 16. Elijah. There is a lot we can learn about season from Elijah. Elijah the prophet. First Kings 17. Verse 
verse 2. The Bible says, this is where the Elijah, you see, what, what I, when I see this, what Elijah was going through, I see the same season we are going through, whether you know, in some cases. There was a problem in the land, and you all know there's a problem in the land. He prophesies, and he says there will be no rain. He is the, we can say he's the cause of the dryness. He prophesied. He says there will be no rain because people did disobeyed. They went into Baal worshiping, so they attracted a judgment. The Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was in the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ab, and said, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there will not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word, Number two, so he already declares there will be, be a famine for three years, three and a half years. That's a long time in famine. Even one month in famine is a lot. Three years, these people suffered. And this is what happened. How many of you know if when, when it happened, he was in it? That's why you find whatever has happened, the servants of God are in it. We are still wearing masks. Whether we are pastors, whether we are prophets, whether we are apostles, we are wearing masks. Why? Because we are in a, we are in a problem. But the, the difference is, in the midst of that problem, the Lord will cover his servant, will isolate his servant. The Bible says, and the word of the Lord came, saying, Get thence and turn eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Shedith. This season, I call it the season of hiding. There's a time in your life God wants you to hide. A season to hide. Where are you hiding? You are hiding from problems. Let me tell you, and I believe all of us, whatever has affected other people has not affected you. How many can say amen to that? I don't see any COVID patient, not because we are special, but God hid you. You are hidden. So there are seasons where God wants to hide you. And you need to be sensitive. There are people right now, through this season, they were aware. They didn't know what was about to happen, but there was a preparation in the spiritual realm. Something was about to happen, and God spoke to them. I remember watching a man of God, and he said, I don't know when before COVID-19 came, I did a lot of sowing. I, I gave people money. You know what God was preparing him? He was preparing him to hide him. That means he's giving right now. Actually, he was saying that because now in the, in the time of this crisis, he's, he has more. He was saying his ministry is even doing better than before. Why? Because his ministry is hidden. Are you getting? So you need to understand there are times when, when, when God wants you to go into hiding. But before you go to hiding, you, you have to sense what is going on. Something is about to happen, and, and you will find there are some things that will begin taking shape. You, you will find that maybe you have a burden to give. So be careful sometimes when, when you, especially when, you, when so much money comes into your hand. Maybe God wants you to, to sow so that in the time when you are hiding, because this is what happened, when he was hiding a raven, supernaturally came and fed him. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what will cause God to feed you during the famine is for you to be sensitive that is my time of hiding. How was he able to know? The Bible says the word of the Lord came to him. So you can write this down. That for you to be sensitive when seasons are shifting, or when God wants you to take you to a sh season, uh, the other way you can tell is when you hear God speaking. And when God speaks, he can speak to you directly or he can speak through people. You can hear people speaking the same thing. The Bible says with the witnesses or two or three, something is established. You hear people saying at your place of work, you know what, this company is going under. Two or three people. God is preparing a season to come in that company. If you are not aware, you're going to be caught. 
If you as a believer, you find yourself, a problem that is affecting other people is affecting you. You are not sensitive in, about the, the, the shift of season. Don't blame God. Don't blame anybody else. Blame yourself. You are not designing that there was a shift. So listen to people. Listen to God. You know, sometimes you might not hear an audible voice, but you can hear people speaking. Something is about to happen. You hear people saying this uh, terrorism is about to happen. Don't, 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 don't just take some news literally. You know, don't, don't disregard some news. Take them down. God could be preparing you to hide you. Get away from a place when a disaster is about to fall. There are so many people who have had testimonies when there was that bomb, 9-11. They felt in their spirit they don't need to be there in that building. They felt. I remember there was a lady, uh, I, I listened to a man of God. I don't know if it was Benny Hinn or who it was. A lady, the previous before the disaster fell, the lady started speaking in tongues. Pray, she, she, she has never prayed in tongues the way she prayed. She prayed so deeply in tongues. And the way she interpreted those tongues was by action. She felt she doesn't need to be around there. That was the interpretation. The Lord was able to deliver her from that by being sensitive. So sometimes when you're about to go into this season, when God is about to hide you, you can feel a burden to pray. A burden to pray. In other words, whenever you feel a breakthrough of prayer, especially unusual breakthrough, a season is coming. A season. There are so many people, and I believe one of you, maybe one of you, you've said, there's a time I felt I needed to pray. And I prayed. And something was about to happen in my family, and I didn't know. But the Lord saved us. Why? Because there was a season that was about to come into your family, but you were able to sense there was a hiding process that was about to come. And so Elijah was saved during this famine by being sensitive to the word of the Lord. Because the, the Bible says, the Lord said, go hide yourself. Can you imagine going God, God, God telling you to hide? God can tell you to hide. Hide yourself. Just the same word God spoke to um, Mary and, and Joseph. He said, take your son J Jesus and run to Egypt because Pharaoh is about to kill your son. So hiding is spiritual. Amen. Hiding. So we need to be sensitive. I was listening the other day to a, a a man of God was saying, somebody was praying in a bush. And they were in prayer. And all of a sudden, he felt he needed to, to just bow down like this. The moment he bowed down, the other side, somebody was hunting. And they shot a bullet. And the bullet missed him. You see, what saved him is because he was in prayer. And that action saved his life. In other words, God saved him because he was sensitive. So in other words, you sense season through prayer. You can tell. Especially when you feel deep prayer, unusual prayer, something is shifting. You feel a breakthrough. It's like you have grace to pray without struggle. There are times you pray, but you don't feel the same. You feel a deep grace to pray. That means something is about to shift. And so the Bible says Elijah went. If, if he can go on, the Bible says, Get this thence and turn eastward. Hide thyself by brook Cherith, and it shall be thou shalt drink of the brook. And I, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and fresh in the morning, and bread and fresh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. You see, he had a very wonderful season. Now he's in hiding and he's enjoying supernatural supply. Just like you have enjoyed. You have not struggled during COVID-19. None of you has hungered. Why? Because God has been feeding you. 
So in other words, when you, you go, when you hide by the command of God, God will take care of you. But you need to understand something. The Bible says, it came to pass after a while, the brook dried. You see, now a season is about to shift. The, problem, the other problem we normally have is that sometimes we enjoy a good season. And we also don't understand that it's just a season. It's a moment. Amen. When you have a season of laughing, it, is a, it, is a, it, has, a period, it has a period. For example, when people crack a joke. You know, sometimes you have crack a joke and people don't laugh. Other people laugh after two minutes. After everybody has laughed. They miss the season <laughs> of laughter. They miss that timing. So what it means is that you need to understand there is timing for everything. Like now when I spoke that, some people laughed. Nobody is laughing now. Because if you laugh now, it's abnormal. <laughs> because there's no joke. So now, it dries. The brook that he was feeding, it started drying. So you need to understand when the seasons are shifting. From one season to another. Because your life comprises of season. If you have a good moment you are enjoying or you are a season of training, you need to understand, now my season of training is coming to an end. Amen. It's just like if you go to stay with a person. God can allow you to live with a person for a season. You need to understand the time you're supposed to be there. If you exceed the season, you have problems. Are you getting? So you need, when you are staying there, you, you need to assess how much time do I have here? Wisdom will tell you now is your time. You need to prepare to live. Otherwise, if you don't live on time, you will die. So the Bible says go, the, the brook started drying. When the brook dried, Elijah knew my season is up. So he waited for go, another direction. So in other words, when one of the signs to show that you are shifting from one season to another, sometimes is dryness. You find some dryness coming in. Dryness could be a, a, a situation that is not pleasant. For example, a time came for Jacob, God wanted him to return to his father's house from Laban. He had a good life. In fact, he became so rich more than Laban. God prospered him, but a time came when he was supposed to move back. You know what happened? When that time came, they started having a strife. So whenever you see you miss especially to hear God, God will allow strife. That is dryness. You find there is no flow anymore. Amen. You are not enjoying. You feel there is a, there is a disconnection. You feel you don't belong. God is shifting you. Don't think he's the devil. Sometimes we are quick to bind demons. I, will, I, I, I told people many times whereby when we were leaving our church in Kenya, one of the indications... I, I went to church and I felt I don't belong here. I, I, I'm a stranger. I'm the pastor of the church, but I feel my time is up. I feel like I'm a visitor. It's like if pastor would, I would ask how many visitors, I will also lift my hand. <laughs> I feel a stranger here. It shows my time, my, our time was up. So if you would have continued to stay there, we would have had problems. So, one of the ways to tell your time is up is some dryness. You find whatever was smooth now is drying. And that, that means you didn't hear God. So, God allows dryness so that you can incline your ear to hear. And you ask God, why are things drying? Amen. Why is the anointing drying? Sometimes even when I'm preaching, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we... we you, you tend to ignore which is not right. When you are preaching, you can tell you are supposed to stop. You feel the anointing has lifted. Am I right, prophet? Even prophets, when you are prophesying and you feel now the anointing has lifted, God is saying, now from now it is your words. You are now talking, no, not me, you. So you, you rather quit. If you continue, now you feed people your own stuff. You tell people you're going to become a millionaire, they become poor. <laughs> Why? Because you exceeded the limit. 
You need to know the timing. You need to sense. Some of us, we don't sense. Sometimes even when you go, you talk, you, you're in a meeting, in a gathering, and you are talking, you need to know the time to stop talking. You know, sometimes you talk until you, you, you get things coming out of your side of the mouth. You talk until, until you tell people after the meeting, I'm feeling my, my, my jaws are paining, and it is you. You didn't know the time to stop. I have been there. There are times I've talked until I feel guilty. I tell God, Lord, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have gone too much. You talk until people bring you water. Because they see this guy is going to collapse. Any minute, let's put some energy. <laughs> Amen. If it, is, if it is you, please, I don't know. But you need to know the time. You need to know time to quit. Tell your neighbor, you need to know the time to quit. And you also need to know the time to start. There's a time when God wants you to contribute to the talk and you don't talk. Then you're missing the time. You need to know this is my time to talk. If I don't talk, and a good example is prophets. If a prophet has a word and they don't talk, they feel like they, w they will explode. Am I right? You feel you are about to explode. Why? Your time, it was your time to speak. The point is hot. Amen. You need to know in every speech is like a graph. There is the climax. If you go beyond the climax, now people start getting tired. They fall asleep on you. So you need to sense when the graph is going up, going up, going up. Before they fall asleep, you quit. <laughs> or you know to stop. That's why the Bible says there is a fruit called the fruit of self control. You have a governance in you. The problem is us. We speak a conversation and we, we, it becomes sweet. You look for more material. Don't look for more material if, if it is gone. That's why I tell people, don't meet without agenda. Amen. And so there is a season shifting. The Lord say, now rise up. Go now. I used to feed you supernaturally. So you need to understand, there's a time God can feed you supernaturally. That means no man is involved. Like T.L. Osborne, one time they prayed and money fell in the house. That is supernatural. But now God can shift you that. You'd, if they were not sensitive, they would have continued waiting for God to rain money and they would have messed their ministry. They, so they were sensitive. They knew now this was just supernatural. Now we need to go to the natural. So now Elijah, God is shifting you from supernatural to the natural. Where now God is as speaking to a widow who now was sensitive to her season. Although she almost missed it. He says, go to Zedaphat. I have commanded a widow in this season to feed you. Amen. So you need to know seasons where God is commanding people. Don't command people. Let God command people. Amen. When there's a season for people to support, this is another season. I call it the season of favor or support. You know you struggle with people supporting you. Doors open. People just give you. They, they don't even know why they are giving you. They say, I don't know you very well, but I'm giving you $100. Strangers give you. Why? Now you're in a season where God commands people. He tells them, so, but you have to be in the right place. You see, he says, go to Zedaphat. If he would have gone to another city, he would have missed the help. So you have to be in the right place at the right time. So don't force people to give you. You know that sometimes we force people. The Lord is, is saying, you give me $50. Like another brother told another preacher, the Lord is saying, give me your jacket. <laughs> the preacher looked at him and he said, the Lord is saying I keep it. It is true if, because if the Lord has not spoken for him to give, the Lord is saying you keep? You keep it. So if somebody comes to you and tells you, the Lord is saying you give me your shoes, and the Lord has not said you give your shoes, the Lord is saying you keep? Uh, is that true? He's still speaking because he has not said you give. <laughs> So you need to understand when a season, there's another season called a season of favor and supply. 
This season, if Elijah didn't know, he would have missed it. Okay? The Lord is telling him, go to Zarephath. I've commanded. The Lord can tell you to go to a city because he knows you have a need. And you don't even know why. And you go there, God has commanded somebody to give you something. So whenever you are praying, be sensitive to the leading. The Lord can tell you, go to church. Or go to this Walmart. God is saying your help is there. Your season of favor is there. Another example before we finish is Esther. Esther, I, I, want, I want you to know this. Esther is not because he was, she was more beautiful than other ladies. No. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is not because she was virgin. There were so many virgins in, in, in Israel. But Mary understood the season. Esther understood her season. It was her season of favor. The king chose Esther because it was her season. So in other words, when your season of favor comes, you find people come to you easily. Not even because of your credentials. Not because of how, how hard working you are. It, things are easy. The connection is easy. It's easy. You don't struggle. You don't command. You just quiet. That's why you find when you understand season, you don't struggle with things. You know that is my season of favor. Now things will come. You don't struggle. So Esther understood her season. Why? Because she was called to lead. She was called to be married to the king so that she can deliver the children of Israel. Also down the line, there was a season whereby she was supposed to present herself before the king. That's why she almost missed it. The Mordecai said, if you don't go before the king and plead our cause, because a season of deliverance is coming, you are not going to be delivered. We're going to be delivered through another source, but you're going to miss out. That's why I tell you, everything was created for God. You see, Esther being married, she thought, I'm just having favor with the king. But it was a purpose. There was a co connection between the marriage of Esther with the deliverance. Amen. So even when you see people loving you without any reason, there's a connection. There's a divine connection. Always ask yourself, why are we connecting? Why are we having a flow? When I meet other men of God or even believers, I ask you, why is there a flow? Where is there a supernatural connection? You know how you tell the supernatural? You feel there's a flow. You feel there's a lot of peace when you talk to an individual. You feel a lot of love. You feel this person, there's something I love about them. You see, the Bible says the disciples, when they were going to a mouse, and Jesus disfigured themselves, you know, did not reveal himself to them. When they were breaking the bread, they, they came to know it was Jesus. But they said, on our way to a mouse, our hearts were troubled. Our, not troubled. Our hearts were, there was a lot going on. There was a lot of activities. That's why we told him to come into our house. If these people did not sense that in their heart, that's why when you are talking to people, be sensitive. That's why the Bible says, men ought always to pray. And faint not. Why? Because you don't know your season. And your season could be hidden to an individual. I can be the key to your season. Amen. So when I'm praying and I'm talking to you, I can tell, oh, this one has my key. Do you know there are people who have been, sh their lives have been changed by one encounter with an individual? Just one day. I'm a good example. My life changed one day. I was in the wilderness. When God was shifting me from that, that experience that I had, it changed within an invitation. Just an invitation. Somebody said, there is a fellowship where I encountered the presence of God. I had never encountered the presence of God. I was born again. I was speaking in tongues, but I had never felt the presence of God the way we feel it here. We feel the presence of God. I, I had never encountered until one sister who was our neighbor, she said, this, this fellowship down the road, I would like to, to, to take you there. And I felt I needed to go. When I went there, 
that is the time my life changed. That is when I had a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And from that moment, my life changed. I began to sense the presence of God in my life. So, when you meet people, be careful. Especially when people are inviting you, or even when people are telling you their problems. Be very careful. Because the Bible says, many have encountered angels without knowing. Do you know the promise of Isaac, the son to Abraham, was angels were passing. And Abraham, they were disguising themselves. They were just ordinary people. They were, angels can appear as human beings. And they were passing, and uh, Abraham said, Men, just come. Come, we'll wash your feet. Jewish custom was to wash their feet, prepare food. Actually, he, he, he invited them and he spoke. The Bible says, if you read in Genesis, after they had spoken, they said, A time like this, where is your wife Sarah? He says, She's here. A time like this, next year, you will have a son. If these people, if Abraham was not sensitive of that season, he would have di died without a son. His life changed because he was a, he designed this is a season. It's a time you can carry money. Abraham was kind. So giving is also very key. That's why he began by saying whenever you have a lot of unusual money in your life, or you feel you want to carry money in your wallet. There's a connection within a season. So when we are moving around, we carry people's seasons and they carry our season. If you want to write that down, you can write it. In other words, your season is changing. Or you getting into a season is through people. Or through God's voice, which can come through people. Because you see, the season of this woman with Elijah, her life was changed also by attracting a man of God at the right time. Because the Lord said, from now on, you will never lack food in your house. You see, even her life changed. So every one of us, me as a pastor, and you as a member of the church or as a friend, you bear season. So you need to be careful in your life that when you are walking around, you could be carrying a key to shift somebody's season. That is powerful, right? You are carrying somebody's season. That means somebody can come to you and say, uh, and you give them a word. You can even, not, not many things, you give them a prophetic word. You don't even, you are prophesying. You say, God is saying, and you shift their life. Or they shift your life. So we help each other in the seasons. But you have to be sensitive. So, I want you to get this. If you, if you miss many things tonight, I want you to get this. That when it comes to seasons, to no season, you need to have what we call discernment. Discernment is key. That's why, that's why we need to be always praying. When you are praying, what happens? You get discernment. Discernment. I'm almost done. And that's why I was sharing. I was talking to people. I, I've been preaching on Thursdays on, on Facebook Live. And I was telling people there are two moments in your day which are very key. Two, two moments. Two times. I, I mean, there are crucial times in your day which are very important. In the morning and before you sleep. Why is it important in the morning? The Bible says early in the morning, Jesus went into a solitary place. That's why you find most of the battles you have in, in the day, they are first in the morning. The devil doesn't want you to wake up early to pray. Because he knows you're going to have discerning of the day. So Jesus used to wake up early in the morning so that he can have discernment. So that whenever he's walking, he knows where he's walking. That's why you find some, because of the response, especially if you are going to face a huge responsibility. You need a lot of discernment. The Bible says when he was about to appoint the 12 disciples, he spent the whole night. That means, according to my mathematics, every disciple, it was one hour prayer. 12 hours. He prayed the whole night so before he appointed the 12 disciples. In the morning, he called them. He appointed them after he spent the whole night. So the huge the responsibility 
the more you need to spend time in prayer so that you can have discernment. If you are going through a deep wilderness, what you need is more prayer. The more the, 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 the season you are going through, the more the intense the season, the more you need to pray so that you, you don't terminate also some of the things. So, because sometimes God is taking you through training, but you, ta- you can terminate it. So what, what causes you to know I'm going through training and I need to endure is prayer. When you pray, you know it's not yet. I need to keep on going. Now is time. Prayer gives you discernment to know now I'm in a season and how long that season is going to last. And prayer will also help you when you're shifting from one season to another. Amen. Right now, even in my life, I sense there's a season of revival. It is there. I keep on telling people like that. There is a season. For those who are sensitive in the spirit, it is being stirred up. And one of the final uh, indication of season shifting is when you sense the presence of God unusual in your life. So heavy. When you find the Holy Spirit embracing you more than usual, you are moving to a season. Because the Bible says, when he spoke to Mary, he says, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Why? Because she was going to a season of bearing the Son of God. So whenever you sense the presence of God so heavy in your life, you are about to go into a season or you are coming from one season to another. Amen. And so I want us to believe God together even as we contend for revival because it is there. I don't want you to miss it. Uh, You know, sometimes we go to church and you say, oh, today I felt the presence of God. I felt so good. Please don't take it lightly. We're in a season. There's a preparation in the spiritual realm whereby if you are not sensitive enough, you miss it. You miss what God is preparing you because when you sense the presence of God is in two ways. One, God is washing you. There is a preparation going inside you because of what is about to happen. Either you are going to a a wilderness experience or a preparation experience, that's why you are feeling a lot of comfort. It's like the Lord is telling you. You see, let me say this before we pray. One time if you read uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah is running from Ahab. He's running. And one time he was suicidal. How many of you know one time he was suicidal? He said, Lord, he, he, re- he, he felt, ba- you know, he was, he, w- he was so tired and he was so exhausted and so frustrated. He decided to, to sleep under a tree. And he said, Lord, take my life. It's not worth the living. Uh, thank you so much. The Bible says, Then he lay and slept under a blossom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him and said, I know, I know that the, 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 the word is there. That is, uh, the, um, my last point is that whenever you feel the presence of God embracing you so unusually, it means you are getting into a season. You see, an angel appears to, that is uh, 1 Kings 19. An angel appears to Elijah when he was suicidal. And he says, he gives him food. So some of the food that sometimes you can find God is feeding you, but it's because you are going to a season. The Bible says in chapter 19, and verse, uh, I'm reading here because uh, this we are not able to see the whole screen. Uh, 5 to, to 18. 5 to 8. The Bible says, sorry, I was reading the wrong way. We are about to pray. Are you getting blessed? I don't want you to miss your season because we are about to experience the glory of God here more than ever before. Say amen. And he lay and slept under Jupiter, Jupiter, J- juniper t- tree. Behold, an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. Another time, another way you, you can tell a season is shifting is supernatural visitation. Or you find the Holy Spirit comes upon you so heavy. You find an angelic visitation. 
You find other times angels don't visit people. But now he's visiting him. Why? There's a season coming. The Bible says, he touched him and said, arise and eat. He's feeding him. Supernaturally. Some of us, of course, that's a good experience. So whenever you have those supernatural experiences where you are feeding supernaturally, it's a season. You are going through a season. You are about to jump into a season. Because the Bible says, he, he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on coals and a cruise of water on his head. And he did eat and drank and laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and he said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for, for you. He had a season he was going to. He was about to go. The Bible says, And he arose and did and eat and drank, and went in the strength of that meat for 40 days and 40 nights into Horeb, the mountain of God. One meal can take you for 40 days. So, be careful because you see an angel feeds him twice and he says eat. Why? Because you're about to go to a season. Amen. Just the same thing I was telling you. When you're exposing to teaching or feeding, because teaching is feeding, you don't know whether you're going to a season. You know, I, I see people, I don't know whether you've been there where you've been exposed to some teaching or feeding and uh, you feel so good and you ask other people, how are you feeling? They are not even feeling anything. It is you. You are the one who is going to a season, so you are the one to eat. I know we have had cases whereby, you know, people come to our house or they are visiting us and we tell them, you eat. You eat. You don't worry about us. You are going all the way to another city. You might not find any shop open, but because you have a journey, you need to do what? Eat. And some of them ignore. Because they don't know how long the journey is, they go halfway and they say, oh my God, I wish I ate. I wish I ate when you were telling me to eat. So the opportunities in your life you need to sense. Why, is, why am I being fed and usually here? Amen. Why? This is another, it's, it's not a very good example, but it, it happens. There are people who come to, I've had, For example, they, they become very nice. They tell you, you know, oh, I feel like I need to eat. And they're almost dying. You see, there's a, there's a shifting. And you're not sensitive. So when you're sensitive, you can tell something is about to happen here. Why is this person eating when they're not supposed to be eating? Why am I eating that much? Why are my feelings to eat? You know, sometimes you say, I feel I have a lot of appetite. I can even eat metal. Maybe you're about to go for 40 days. <laughs> Amen. How many have felt unusual appetite sometimes? Don't lift your hand because it might be many of you. You know, you feel unusual appetite. You feel you want to. God is conditioning you maybe. You're about to go for seven days and you're going to go in the strength of that meat. Amen. You are about to be sent into a region where there is no word. Where the gospel is not preached the way we are preaching. And you are taking the word lightly. God is about to send you to, to Russia. Don't say amen if you don't believe that. A communist country. And so God exposes you to all this teaching because he knows where you are going. You're going to need that word. Do you know why people give up when they go to foreign countries? It's because they do not have reserve. They didn't. Do you know why some people go into bondage? They don't prepare. They don't know there is a shifting. The reason why the children of, of Israel went into bondage for 40 years is because when they were in Goshen, they were enjoying stuff. They were in a season of plenty. And they forgot that a season is going to come where Joseph, when he dies, the Bible says another king rose up who did not know Joseph. And he took them into bondage. So be careful when you are enjoying stuff around you. Amen. Be careful. When you find money is flowing, you know, so easily. You know, it's, you even tell people, for me, money is not an issue. God, you could be 
is talking something for a season to come. Amen. Did you learn something tonight? How many are blessed? So I want you to pray this prayer tonight because it's a preparation. I want us to pray, God help me to be sensitive for the seasons that are ahead because you are about to bless me. Amen. Some of you have been offended by people because you went to them for help and you are in the wilderness, they are not supposed to help you. When I was going through the wilderness, I remember one time, uh, that time I, you know, I was struggling even to eat, to find, even to eat meat. It was a blessing. I would lift up my hands in my small room. Thank you, Jesus, for this meat. Because my meat would be, for those people who come from where I come from, is a, uh, the cow's stomach. That was my meat. I fried them and I closed the door, no visitors. My best dish. And then one day, a guy, a friend of mine, you know, somebody came to me and said, I want you to take me somewhere. And he took me to a very posh place. Uh, one of these wonderful uh, million dollar homes. Uh, not dollar homes, I mean back home. And when we went to this house, the first thing that struck me is on the table, it was full of money. A heap of, I've never seen a, that kind of amount of money. Heap of money. And so he said, this is where I wanted you to come because I want you to help us to count this money. It wasn't stolen money. Don't, don't think, oh, uh, a drug cartel took me there. No, no, no. It, th these were business people. They were dealing with a lot of money. And it was cash. So it was all scattered. So we, we, we were to count it and, and, and fold it nicely so that tomorrow they, they take it to the bank. Let me tell you, when I went there and I was counting money, and I was saying, thank you, Jesus. The wilderness is over. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. By the time we were living there, they didn't give me even a coin. I felt like cursing them and calling the fire to consume all that money. I was wondering, Lord, you know what I'm going through. You can't even touch them to give me at least. You know, they just said, oh, thank you so much. I think the, 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 the best they did was, I think, a drink. I think I even, you know, I don't even remember what I took. Because I thought, now I'm shifting. My wilderness experience is over. In my eye, before my eyes. I'm telling you, they looked at me and said, thank you so much. How would you feel yourself? Would you tell them, God bless you? No. They said, be defeated with all your money. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know why they didn't help me? I was in the wilderness. In the wilderness, nobody notices your problem. You cry, nobody can hear you. Because you are there in the boonies. You try to lift up your hand. Oh, nobody is seeing. They are saying, I think that's a tree shaking. And you are dying of thirst. <laughs> Those are the days whenever you take Coca-Cola, you feel, oh my God, thank you. I'm telling you, they gave me nothing. And not because my parents were not well up, but I was exposed to wilderness, where even my parents, my dad, didn't want to help me. They only wanted to help. One time I tried to go back home. He said, go back to where you come from. You already left here. Because I left, I went, the fire was too much. I decided to go back. He found me showering. They said, why are you showering here? <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be in that small room on your own. Go, go. I don't want to see you here. <laughs> now I felt like cursing my dad. I didn't know until later that God was using him for my training. Please, when you are going through problems or wilderness or training, don't complain. Tell your neighbor, endure the wilderness. Endure the training. Even your best friend, they don't want to help. You even tell people, remember me in your prayers. Do they remember you? You meet them the other day, they, you ask them, did you pray for me? Oh my God. I think we prayed for the dogs and the, and the cats and the uh, for your country, and we forgot. I f I'm so sorry. They don't remember. You see, Joseph, the Bible says, not this Joseph, 
when Joseph was, the, was in, in jail in the wilderness, he told one of the guys he gave them a prophecy. He said, when you go before the king, do what? Remember me. Did he remember him? The Lord caused him to forget. God can cause people to forget you. Because God is training you. You are in a season of training. Please pray for endurance. And don't fail exams. Because the problem, is if you keep on failing exams, you, you continue staying in the wilderness. It will be repetitive. Tell your neighbor, pass exams. In the training, God will teach you a lot of stuff. Even stuff other people don't know. Did you know most people who are very prayerful are people in the wilderness? They are very prayerful. They even tell you, I saw a revelation, but he's, he's, he's seeing a revelation in the wilderness. And you, you are not seeing it. But him, because he's in the wilderness, he's seeing revelations. Although some of the revelations are in the flesh, because he's seeing hamburgers flying. <laughs> oh, I saw a hamburger. I think I'm going to have a hamburger for lunch. And there's no hamburger. <laughs> so be careful with the visions you see when you're in the wilderness. Amen. Can we all rise up on our feet? Did you receive something? So I want us to pray for discernment. Even for those who are watching. Discernment for seasons. Discernment for seasons. Hallelujah. Discernment. Tell the Lord I want to design the seasons. When you are starting the waters. The Bible says once after some time the angel would appear and start the waters. And whoever would jump into the water would be healed. There was a season of starting up. May the Lord help you to sense your season shifting. Or when you are entering into a season. May you tell the Lord, I want to sense my seasons. I want to know when to keep quiet and when to talk. When to sleep. When to weep. When to, when to mourn. All these seasons and timings. I need it. Yes, yeah, speak to God. Don't be quiet. This is something you need to tell God. Lord, from today, I have been praying since God gave me this revelation. I've been praying, God, I don't want to miss my season. I have missed it before, but from today, I will not miss my season. Say it. I will not miss my season. I refuse to miss my season. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to have discernment. When I meet people, I'm going to discern. Oh, Radabahaska, Shehese, Ferenia Mahasko, Shemeheska, Leha, Saha, Sehe, Forohoske, Heha, Faradia Mahasko, Shomohoske. From today, Lord, as I've spoken your word, may you quicken us to sense when you're starting the waters. Some star, sometimes you have started the waters, and we thought it is the enemy starting the waters. And we miss our season. May you help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. For those who are watching online, wherever you are watching, and you believe the Lord has sent me with this word, because the Lord has been dealing with me concerning this word for more than a week now, understanding the seasons and times. That is the key to your success, my brother. You will never succeed in life unless you know the timings and seasons. That is why you admire some people because they walk in their seasons. When are you going to walk in your season? But I tell you from today, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss your season. Say amen. Lift up your hand. Wherever you are, you are believing this is your word. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I've heard your word. And from this very moment, the beginning of this conference, I have learned something. That my success in my life is designing the times and the seasons. May you forgive me, Lord, for the time I did not design. When you are moving, when you are shifting me from one season to another, May you help me to have discernment, to sense the seasons and the timings in the name of Jesus. I receive your word wholeheartedly from this very moment. And I declare, I'm not going to miss the times and seasons 
that are in my life. Holy Spirit, help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray for you. That from today, God will enable you. You're going to be sensitive when you see unusual things happening around. You're going to be sensitive. Some of you who have been dry in your prayer life, you go back into prayer. I don't play around with prayers. I'm not, I'm not boasting. I'm not a champion in prayer. But I, I know the importance of prayer. One of the importance of prayer, you become the son full of seasons. You can feel when things are changing. And when they are not changing, you feel there's a constant. There's a constant. There's nothing changing. And you know, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to do it. Why? Because you are sensing the seasons. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for your people. I pray that from today, Holy Spirit of God, every one of us, from myself to them, and even those who are watching online, that none of us will miss the timings and the seasons. We're going to know when the water is being stirred up for us to jump in. We're going to know what to do and when not to do what we are not supposed to do. Even if it's a good thing, we're going to know when to stop because heaven is stopping. We're going to know when heaven is moving and we move with the heavens. And we're going to know when the heaven is not moving for us to move. We go, we're going to also walk in the speed of heaven. When the heaven is running, we're going to run. When the heaven is walking, we're going to walk. We're going to walk in the pace of heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray right now to every one of them. If there is anyone here that missed their season of visitation. I declare the Lord you're going to reconnect them again with their seasons. You're going to reconnect them with their timing. Every one of us. Because now we know better. We know, we know, we didn't know before, but now we know how important seasons and timings are. Father, touch your people right now. Even those who are watching, receive the anointing. Receive the grace of God to endure. Some of you who are going through training, season of training, may you endure that training. Some of you who are going through a wonderful time, may you discern even when that time is going in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to the Lord for a few minutes. Yeah, sakhasa, shandolo hoskenia. Yeah, tell the Lord I embrace your word with joy. Yeah, sahasoka, lehesa kahas. So speak in other tongues if you can. Because the Spirit of God is moving right now. The power of God is moving right now. Take it in the name of Jesus. This is your season of preparation. This conference is geared to prepare you for great things. Oh, sapoha saha. Speak to the Lord for a few minutes. Speak to the Lord for a few minutes. Speak to the Lord for a few minutes. Tell the Lord I'm receiving your power. Yes, sapoha saha. Lebobohosha. Yeah, receive the grace of God to endure. To know your timings and season. Receive the power. Laboho, I decree and declare that none of you shall miss your seasons. Including myself. Our families will not miss the seasons. Declare your family members. They will not miss the visitation. They will not miss those divine moments. Yeah, declare, declare, declare. Declare your son, your daughter. She's not going to miss the seasons. It is not just for you, but it's also for your family. It's for the nation. It is for the city. It is for the, the church. Declare, 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 declare. Yeah. Hey, Salalabasu. Kepahase. Shandelele boya. You're not gonna miss your season and your timings. Ha saha. There are people who are receiving a touch right now, even those who are watching. Take it. And whatever the problem you have in your life, lift your hand. I'm gonna pray for problems. I'm gonna pray for sickness to leave your body disease to melt from your body right now. I decree that you are healed. If you are sick, receive the healing right now. 
I release healing wherever you are. I release deliverance. I release miracles. Signs and wonders. Hey, Saha. Shalaha, say, hey, hey. We are almost done. I want us to take two minutes or three. Remember this conference for a few minutes right now. I know we're going to pray in our houses. Why don't you remember the servant of God tomorrow night? Tell the Lord to anoint the prophet so that he will release the word of the season tomorrow. Yeah, declare that tomorrow is going to be awesome. The Lord is going to stir him up and give him the, the word of the season. The word of the season. Father, I pray that tomorrow we're going to be awesome. We're going to rise. Thank you, Lord, because we are gaining momentum in this conference. By Sunday, we're going to see great things happening. We thank you and we praise you, even as we continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Are you blessed?